morning and welcome to Ag Talk in the Raw. So I haven't done one of these in quite some time because I've been extraordinarily busy. Taking a couple of aspirins because I've got a bit of a headache. Um, yeah, uh, got a little bit of time today because it's snowing. Yeah, we've had quite a bit of snow here in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. And uh, still been working, working in the shop, putting that uh, the footage of that up in on One Only Farmer channel, which is my other channel, if you don't know that, which 99% of you do know that. Uh, but, yeah, it's there. We're working on it. And I will be working on it again today because there's just all these little... All these little things, and we can talk about this, uh, about your equipment, if you're a farmer and you're watching this, and my equipment, uh, because my equipment counts for me, your equipment does not, but it works for you, and it counts for you, and maybe some of the information that you'll see over there will, uh, will uh, you know, will uh, help you in your own equipment. And I know there's some young guys that uh, have asked me some questions. I had a guy the other day, and he caught me in rare form. He asked me uh, if I had any advice for a young farmer just starting out, how to get started making little bales of hay for the mushrooms, not for mushrooms, but for horse people, or just little bales. Idiot blocks is what I call them. A lot of people make a lot of money on idiot blocks. I just can't stand dealing with the idiots that buy them. It's unfortunate for them because I used to make a really good product. And unfortunately for, you know, me again, is that I'm going to venture back into the little bale market. I don't really want to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because uh, it's, it's more profitable, uh, but I will not be dealing with local people. That's the, that's the long and the short of it. So the other day somebody asked me, uh, hey, do you got any advice for a young farmer that's going to start making uh, little bales for the, uh, you know, for that market? And I, I was a little bit evil, and I said, yeah. I said, go down to the gun store, buy yourself a Smith & Wesson, and borrow one bullet. You don't have to buy the whole box. Just borrow one bullet. Put it in your revolver and give her a spin and put it to your head. Pull the trigger. And if it clicks and doesn't go off, it's a good day to go make hay. Well, that's pretty brutal to say something like that and uh, for that person if you're watching this I'm, I'm sorry I really am you know it just sometimes you have a bad day at work and a question is like that somebody asks you but you know look farming is hard it, it doesn't matter what anybody says you can watch all these other farming channels out there and they can glorify it with their new equipment and and their multi-million dollar grain facilities that you're going to be putting up because you know hey we got an insurance policy that the duration ripped our old buildings down and we're just gonna we're just gonna go balls to the wall and take the full nut and and borrow a million dollars or so to move it and uh, build a new one uh you know that's really a unique situation right there uh you know it is a unique situation and uh that particular, those particular, I, I, I could say this for myself as well, have a secondary income, which is YouTube. Uh, YouTube pays us a little bit of money. Uh, me, not so much. Uh, I've never made over $50,000 in a year. 50, I think the most I made was 56000 in a year from YouTube. Okay? And that's a big no-no. My channel is no longer a big popular channel. Uh, at one point, I guess it was. I really never cared for the popularity contest, uh, you know. And uh, but whatever. The the one year that I made the good money was probably three years ago, when I made a fifty six thousand dollars. Now in that three years since, uh, I have gained. I guess the last that I really made and that was twenty eighteen. So. 18, 9, what's 19, 20, 21. So two and a half years ago was when I made, or two years ago I made that kind of money. Uh, but the large farming channels, the ones that put up a video and within an hour or two they got 100,000 views, those guys, they're making several hundred thousand dollars a year. They are, trust me. Hmm. Not only are they making several hundred thousand dollars a year, they're also getting paid sponsorships and things like that. I have been offered the same paid sponsorships. It's just I feel fucked up doing it. I don't 
I don't like it. Uh, I don't think that even though they're getting a paid sponsorship, they're not getting paid what their advertising uh, is worth, to be honest with you. Uh, it is a cheap way of advertising their clothing, their equipment, their cleaning and oil supplies and all these other things. It is very cheap for them to approach a, a YouTuber or a guy like me and say, hey, we'll give you a few pennies to uh, reach out to hundreds of thousands of key people that watch your show. Like, let's, let's use WD-40 for an example here because they did approach me and I did sign a contract and I accepted their terms that I would make a video and get 500 bucks. They wanted three videos from me. They sent me they sent me a very very small sample of the products that they had and they said to me, "Hey, uh, you know, would you do this? For, first of all, we'll start at the beginning. Would you do this?" And do, you know, would you do this? Of course, yeah, sure, I'll do it. For $500 a video, why not? It's a, you know, it's a product I need anyway, or it's a product I'd like to try anyway. So they send me a box of like seven or eight different products, and they're like, here you go. I'm like, well, what the hell is this? Uh, in order to do a proper evaluation of their product, I would need at least a case or two of each and every one of those products to form an honest opinion. And when I said that, they were like, nah, I don't think so. You know, what we want you to do is just, we gave you a grease gun to use. Just put the grease in there and tell them how good it is. I can't do that because I don't believe in the product. Uh, I used some of their product. I could go right over to the farm right now, open the drawer and show you in a video that I still have the majority of that stuff in there because they changed the contract. Uh, it was like, oh, by the way, uh, you know, before it was post the video, tell us you posted the video and then let us know. We'll review the video and when you get three of them, we will send you a check for $1,500. Oh, and it would be $250 per Instagram post. Well, I was like, oh, okay, how many Instagram posts would you like? And they're like, oh, well, just three. Three Instagram posts would be fine. Sorry, I'm a little distracted here. Three Instagram posts would be fine. We, we'd enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you $250. I was like, well, shit. You know, five, six, seven hundred and fifty bucks, you know, plus a $1,500. I'll make a few thousand dollars off of these people. So first thing I did was I took photo of my, uh, my product, the product that they had sent me, and I announced that I would be doing YouTube videos. And I did three posts. And I sent in and gave him the link, and I never received a penny. I was like, I got a little bit of a sinus thing going, so bear with me on that. But and I just never received a penny. I was like, well, that was kind of shitty of him. And then I get an email like, hey, uh, by the way, uh, before you make those videos that you're going to make, um, we'd like you to forward it to us, and uh, we want to review it. And then if we don't like what's on there, we'll, we'll have you redo it. For 500 bucks, you want me to script a video, look and act natural, and lie about the product that you, uh, or possibly lie, I won't say lie about it, but possibly lie about the product that I am say, representing. Uh, no, I was raised different than that. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't endorse something without using it and rigorously using it. And I can tell you, if you watch my channel, YouTube channel, One Only Farmer, and you see a product on there, and I'm using it consistently, it's because it works. Okay? It's because it works. Now, this thing goes on and on. The next, I never received the dollar. I, I did one video with... Uh, with the WD-40 and I felt really weird about doing that because I don't know how what the longevity of this stuff is. I don't know that if I put it in my $5,000 CV jointed uh, power takeoff shaft on my Crone Big Pack HDP high speed, I don't know whether it's going to protect it like they said it would. I don't know that. Apparently, I owe my Verizon bill. I have to go pay, have to pay that. Anyway, um, 
and they've sent me a couple things. I usually pay my bills. I don't understand what the hell that is about. They did it last month, too. Maybe I'm behind one month. I let it slip, but whatever. You know, it's one of those things that I have to deal with. So anyway, um, yeah, so I felt really weird about it, but I never received a dollar from WD-40. So fast forward a year or possibly a year and a half, two years, and I get a email from Blaster. Blaster, PB Blaster. Well, they call it Blaster now. It's not PB Blaster, even though it, I think it. I think it still does say PB Blaster on the, the the original Blaster product. Well, Blaster has several different products that they use, that they have, and they're like, hey, would you like to uh, receive some product and uh, do a do a review on it, and then post a video? I'm like. Okay, well, yeah, sure, I guess I'll try this again. Um, send me, you know, send me your product. And they, you know, send me the products that you want me to use, and I will, uh, you know, I'll give them a go. So I, they're like, oh, really? Excellent. Um, but what we want you to do is to take all of your products that you have in your shop that you use put them away and only use blaster products for six months. I had this thing somewhere. There's an email. I could probably read it to you. Uh, if you guys want me to read it to you, I will have to search it up, but just leave a comment in this comment section below. If you want me to read the actual emails that were sent back and forth from the blaster corporation, which I probably will anyway, because you know what? This is, it's too much, too much fun here. So that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this guy. Okay. So we can search within, we can do blaster, B-L-A-S-T-E-R, blaster, Costco, blaster, blaster, anyways. Okay. I've got them. Uh, just checking in, thanks. Let's see what we got. Give me a second here because this is actually raw video and I, I just need to. Okay. All right. So I think this is the first one. It is November 26th of 2018. It's a, hey, Wesley, we have Blaster, maker of PB Blaster. Love your YouTube content. Is PB Blaster something you use for projects? Have you ever used any Blaster products? We're planning on PB Blaster campaign in 2019 and are looking for influencers to work with you, work, work with. Are you interested? If so, can you send me your rates and media kit? Like, media kit? What the hell is that? I have no idea what she's talking about, right? Um, so I wrote, I said, well, my number is blah, blah, blah. I will have, I don't have a rate, but what I normally do is you supply a product line. I try them out. If I think they are good, I post them on my channel. If the videos are good quality, I would like to, I would like a supply of the product so I can continue using it in my videos. The reason I say this is because if I endorse your product and the in the future video I am using something different, I lose credibility and people notice this stuff. So send me some different products. I will give them a go. The ones I don't like, I won't put on my channel. And that's what I wrote. That's awesome. I agree about being on the same page. Thanks for suggesting it. We can all we can have a call next week. Let me know. Good day time. Mean in the meantime, can you share and rate info with me just so we can start planning? Um, okay. We can probably arrange to send you products a few times throughout the next year. Let me put the finishing touches on our 2019 campaign and get back to you. All right, so I get another one, and this was in January. Hey, Wesley, sorry for the long delay. Here's the campaign review. Basically, we are asking for three videos, March, July, and November, and we would happily supply products a few times. As I mentioned, let me know if you're on board, assuming you end up like our other products, of course. We would ask that you don't show any of our competitors, WD-40, Liquid Wrench, Croil. Thank you. So that's what they said, all right? They didn't want, and these are, they did not want any competitors. 
All right, so I responded. I said, the only way I can agree to this is if you send me a full lineup of products. I use all types of lubricants for change, cable lube, open gear lube, cutting oil, whatever else is needed at the time. If I agree and I need to spray grease, what am I to do? So unless I get a full range of products that you produce, I cannot agree to the terms. I run a very large operation and I cannot be worried with the contract breach when I'm fixing something. I hope you understand my position. Thank you. And uh, hi Wesley, sending you a sampling of our products, including PV products mentioned in the campaign. Um, okay, so it says, hi Wesley, I think we're all set then. I do just need your address for shipping the products. All right, so, and I, I supplied all that stuff. Uh, you know, actually I actually gave the farm address, not the home address. Uh, then I get this other thing. It says, hi Wesley, if you're still interested. Now, I haven't read these in a year or so. Please send me your address. I can arrange products being shipped. Okay. Just wanted to see if you posted any videos yet of the blaster. Not yet. I'm on vacation until the 27th. I have one in the can and I have more to make. Appreciate you sending out the products. Like I said, I will use for a bit before I post any videos. And then they just kept annoying me. Hey, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? It was like, then they said, oh my God, and it just keeps going on. Uh, all right, so I sent, them, I sent them the address again. Hi, Wesley, if you're still interested, please send me your address. They're going to arrange products. And why they kept doing this, it just, it was like there were so many people that were working on this thing with me that they didn't know what the other one was doing. Okay. I was just checking in. Hey, Wesley, sorry for the long delay. The campaign overview. Now, here's something that says, hold on, I got a PDF. Oh, these are just re, uh, why they reposted this stuff. All right, so here we go. I said, I've used PB Blaster for over 20 years. I've used it in my channel as well. Before I agree to anything, I would like to talk to you on the phone so we are on the same page as we... Uh, is what you want from me because things were getting a little weird oh, and why okay so here we go hey Wesley saw the video you posted Friday I'm glad you like so many of our original products so sorry for the miscommunication I couldn't find any note from you about how much product you might need and you just stopped responding to me I didn't stop responding to you. and just so you know PV Blaster is a small family owned 35 person company with limited resources not some corporate giant so while I can't send you an unlimited lifetime supply of free product, we do hope you find something new from Blaster. And I, so that pissed me off. I never asked for a lifetime supply. What I asked for was a supply for the time of the full lineup because I had to put everything that I was using away. That's what they wanted me to do. And I'll read what I responded to. I'm not looking for any lifetime supply of anything from you. When you asked me to do a review, I explained that I would use the product for a while before I would do the interview. I remember talking with you through text, email, and maybe there was a miscommunication as to what, good morning, William, as to what you and I required do the paper review. I stated that one email that I would have removed all competitors' products, and I'm cool with that as long as you supply me with enough product to use during the time requested for the review. Even though the review may not have been what you like, I, it was a good review. I just felt what I was asked to do and what I got to do with were not adequate. So, you know, that's where everything fell apart. Now, if that was the way that they wanted me to do these these uh, product reviews, it, <clears throat> every other farming channel or any other, every other channel with every other product, because that was a very similar request that WD40 had done, that PV Blaster had done. I had some some company that was sending me some tools. They wanted me to put everything away. I told them that I wouldn't. They sent me the tools anyway, and I sent the video for review to them. They said I can see a, a different manufacturer's drill press, which was a Chinese drill press that I have in the shop forever. 
Uh, so we can't use that video. So at that point, I had pretty much decided, you know what, I'm not taking, A, I haven't gotten any money out of it. I got some free product, fine, uh, shitty grease gun from WD-40, and uh, I think PB Blaster actually sent me the same cheap-ass piece of Chinese crap grease gun to use their stuff with. And I just, at that point, I just said, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not even going to deal with this anymore. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. It isn't worth it to me to to kiss these people's ass for literally pennies of, of product. And it just didn't feel natural to me. So I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but it just keeps going on and on and on. So <sighs> when you're watching these channels and it seems or feels like it's one long infomercial, Anybody that's doing these infomercials, they haven't used that product but one or two tubes unless they start buying that product and believing in it. Now, I don't see anybody doing that. Um, I think that PB Blaster Grease and WD-40 Grease is more of a homeowner special type of a thing. Uh, and that's my personal opinion because uh, there's much better greases out there. If you're going to buy grease from a company, buy it from a reputable company like Valvoline or uh, Wolf's Head or Schaefer's. I use Schaefer's grease and I use Valvoline grease. And if you have any of those, that kitty's going to get you. Uh, if you have any of those products and you're using them and you have good faith in them, these other companies, they're just contracting other people to make this stuff. And you don't see big shops using PB Blaster greases or WD-40 greases anyway. Not that they're bad products. They're just not. They're just not the quality that you need for high speed. So where did you get? Ah, did you see that snap? You see this little guy? He's getting so big. Look how big you're getting. So anyway, there you go. So that was my thoughts on these things and. And there's a lot of criticism that goes towards me, and it's fine. I don't mind the criticism as long as it's constructive. But uh, when you hear, you know, oh, yeah, well, one only farmer, you don't get any of the deals. Trust oh, yeah. me, I've had deals from equipment companies, not that, not like Case or John Deere, and I don't even want to, um, or these, you know, but whatever. You know, the only company that I think that I would truly endorse like truly endorse because I know their product inside and out and how good it actually is. And and you all know what I'm going to say. It is Crone. Crone. Crone Big Packs. Excellent bailers. As long as you do the maintenance that is required and outlined in their maintenance schedules, and is in the back of the operator's manual, they are there. You will have. I have no doubt that I'm going to get the original Crone baler that I own to 100,000 bales. And probably or possibly beyond um, and that's just what I'm gonna do and that's th what I say is uh, you know what will happen and if Crone said hey Wesley you know what you're a good guy you've been running our bailers you've never asked us for anything other than nothing I was offered stuff I was never I never asked for anything uh, oh I, I did ask for some clothing and they did send me some promotional clothing because I do I do love their product so much. And I, and at some point in my life, I will be buying a Crone Big M. It's just not quite there yet. But uh, they're expensive. I don't give a damn what you say. They're, they're damned expensive. But they do, the, the work that they do is definitely well worth it. Um, but anymore, it would be really hard for me to go ahead and get in bed with a company. Walls, outdoor clothing. Uh, you know what they sent me? Me and Walls did. They contacted me like, "Hey, would you do a Would you wear our clothes?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay, sure." What are you gonna send me? Send me some, send me some uh, coveralls, like full on coveralls. They asked me what sizes I had and and all this, what I was and what some of the crew were. And I told them. They sent me bib overalls. I I don't wear bib overalls. I don't. I just don't. They don't fit right. Well, they fit okay. They just don't feel right. And when some, you know, ever tried to try to take a piss in those things? You gotta fuck with this stuff and get it all out. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. The older you get, the faster you gotta go. You know it. 
you know, you've been in a tractor and you want to get a field done and you're, you're just holding it. And you're like, oh, my God. And then when you get out of the tractor, you're like, oh, my God, I got to fiddle with these things. And, and opening a fly on a pair of bibs, forget it. I didn't like what they sent me. Now, if they'd have sent me a jacket, real nice walls jacket, or even the coveralls, the heavy-duty winter coveralls that I see that a lot of other people are getting, I have purchased walls outdoor products for as long as some of these guys have been alive. And, uh, you know, and I find that to be funny, but they're getting paid to do that. And it's good. It's okay. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea and I don't really care to do it. So you're not going to find me selling out. If you see me endorsing a product, I've bought it. If you see me endorsing a product, I've bought it and I use it and I've used it for a while and I like it. Free all. That shit works. If you're looking for a, 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 a liquid wrench in a can, is what I would call it, don't buy liquid wrench. Don't buy PB Blaster. Don't buy WD-40. Buy Free All. Free All frees all. And that stuff really, really, truly does work. Um, we buy it now. Uh, the first time I was uh, exposed to it was last spring when the, uh, the guys down on the straw job, the farmers I was using down, uh, the farmers I was working for down there, they're like, oh man, this stuff is great. I'm like, yeah, give me a break. It's just crap in a can. And then I used it. I was like, damn, this thing dissolves rust. I don't know what it is. It can't be good for you, but it works. And then you can get free all lube, free lube. I think it's called lube free or whatever. This stuff worked great. So anyway, if that's, <laughs> I mean, it, it's great. The, that product works really well. I would recommend that over anything. Um, but if you're going to use greases, uh, worth W U with the two dots above it, R T H SIG 3000 for drive lines. And, uh, God, you can use Schaefer's. Uh, for everything else, but the drive lines definitely get the SIG 3000 by worth. Uh, it's expensive. It's like $16 a tube if you're going to buy it. Uh, use it sparingly, and I say use it sparingly. You don't need to put a lot in. It's like one tube will last you three times what a tube of any other variety of grease will last you. So that's just my two cents on that, and I, I do plan on purchasing some more of that stuff, and I've used that for I got away from it because it got so expensive and I thought, you know, well, I can, I can use like, I can use a different product, which will work just as good. Right No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, no, the CV joints in the new Holland baler lasted 27,000 bales and the CV, of course, the new Holland baler did not have the, took, take the horsepower that it takes to run a Crone baler, but, but. I used worth in that in all 27,000 bales that I put through that thing in two years and never had a problem with the power takeoff shaft. Uh, I get through 15,000 bales with these and they're shot. I mean, they're just wobbling like a sick whore. Uh, they're terrible. So I'm going to go back to the worth to put in those CVs. And, uh, and they are the same company, by the way. And as a matter of fact, the, the uh, CV joints in the uh, Crone baler are heavier than the ones that were in the New Holland. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to go back to. I'm going to go back to the SIG 3000 by Worth. Uh, it's German, I would think, because it's got the two little dots above the U. I don't even, I don't know. But it was like between $14 and $16 a tube, 10 and a half ounce tube. But I guess I've talked now for 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, at least you know my position on uh, paid sponsorship. And uh, the fact that I really don't care how much money I make on here. And, uh, you know, I, th I think a lot of people really need to take a lot of people that are watching these YouTube channels and are seeing only the, the positives, the positives, the positives, and are very rarely seeing the negatives. And, you know, when there's a repair, except for Andy at f Farming, Fixing, and fact Fabricating, Farming, Fixing, and Fabricating, that man does shop work all the time and does a great job and kudos to him because uh, that's what we do. 
you know, that's a real shop, you know, it's a real farm where things really do break and you really do have to fix them and we show what it takes to do that and the cost saving uh, activity of doing your own shop work. Now I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of folks out there that say, you're doing that wrong, you don't know what you're doing, you didn't use a micrometer, you used your, you didn't use torque wrench, you just used it good and tight thing. You know what, I've been doing this probably more years than most most of you kids have been alive and uh, yeah when you turn a wrench all the time you know you know you just know if you've never turned a wrench or if you've been uh, you know like Warren you watch Warren from uh, you know Western truck and tractor you know he's that man knows more about any of the anything he has a broader uh, appreciation of different engines, tractor types, tractor transmissions. You ask him something on a Massey Ferguson tractor, I'm sure he could tell you exactly what the problem is by the symptoms. Or a Mahindra. You know, I don't know if he'd ever, well, I, I haven't seen him work on a Mahindra, but there's things are just Indian junk. Um, but if you got a Mahindra, good luck with, with it. I had a guy call me up one time, and he's a friend of mine. He's like, hey, um, I want to get rid of this New Holland. It's a T475. He bought it like five years ago and he's like, this thing is just, it's not a John Deere. It's not a John Deere. He says, and I don't really want to pay for a John Deere. He says, but uh, the dealer that I bought the New Holland from, they, they're they steering me towards a Mahindra. I says, uh, towards a Mahindra? I says, you need to run away from that thing. That thing's not even worth anything. He says, well, in your opinion, what what tractor in the 50 to 75 horsepower range would you buy? I said, well, I'm a John Deere junkie, you know, but I says, to be honest with you, I'd buy a Kubota. Go out and see Neil Messick at Messick's Equipment and get yourself a Kubota. Tell him that Wes Pandy sent you and he'll charge you double. But uh, anyway, no, that's not true. He wouldn't charge him double. He'd probably give him a little bit of a break. But anyway, that's just the way it is. And uh, yeah, so... Good luck. I'm done. I'll see you later.